Welcome to Popular Cruising. You're watching our review of the Seven Seas Explorer from Regent Seven Seas Cruises. Touted as the most luxurious ship ever built, it had some pretty big shoes to fill. And we must say, the ship has succeeded at it. Starting, of course, with its accommodations, which begin with deluxe veranda suites that are sized closer to standard staterooms, but are still luxuriously appointed. Especially with marble bathrooms and a comfortable shower. Next up in size are concierge suites, as we personally experienced. Including a plush, handsome bedroom space. Desk and vanity area. Living room, perfect for indoor dining. And of course, a private balcony. which on board the Seven Seas Explorer are some of the biggest that we've ever seen. And the bathroom is also quite beautiful, featuring some of our favorite toiletries ever. A tub shower combo, and another moderately sized separate shower, with an awesome rain shower head. Getting bigger still are penthouse suites. With a separate living room and bedroom. And expansive bathroom. With an individual toilet compartment. And nice larger shower. Stepping up yet again is the Seven C Suite. With a comfy living room serviced by a stylish guest bath, a sleek separate bedroom, and a fantastically colorful master bathroom. Then there is also the grand suite, with cozy living room furnishings, an elegant bedroom, and one of the ship's best configured bathrooms thanks to a shower with an outside view. And believe it or not, the master suite is still not the biggest set of accommodations on board. Although it comes close with a guest bedroom, a guest bath, a polished master bedroom, and a master bathroom with bathtub, a separate toilet, and sizable shower. Not to mention a wonderful balcony layout. But the creme de la creme of private havens on board is the Region Suite, spanning the whole width of the ship and even featuring its very own observation lounge. Complete of course with a guest bath, but also showcasing a living room and fully stocked bar. Plus an entire side suite with its own bedroom and bathroom comparable to concierge suites. Of course though it's the master bedroom that's hard to beat what with its impressive $150,000 bed. And of course there's a master bathroom complete with its own spa, opulent bathtub, an ornate shower to match, toilet and bidet, a private sauna, outdoor whirlpool, and two massive balconies. As for activities on board, everything begins at the atrium. With its stunning central chandelier. And grand staircase down to a wonderful live jazz combo. Heading back in the other direction is this exquisite colonnade. Leading to the likes of the Explorer Lounge. Great for social gatherings. 
and taking in some live tunes from the classic ocean liner style bandstand. And just across the way is the casino. Showcasing a timeless aesthetic befitting of James Bond. And just the right amount of games. Also past scores of some of the fine art on board. Are the ship's boutiques. Offering just enough without being pretentious about it. After all, I was simply happy to buy a Regent Fleet coffee mug. But there was still plenty more to satisfy. Rejoining our jazz friends here at the atrium will give you a good view of what's upstairs. Including the world-class reception and concierge desks. On par with the best of any shoreside hotel lobby. And just next door is the stylish Meridian Lounge. For even more lively events. Particularly nice is also the Canyon Ranch Spa Club. With its salon at the entryway. Friendly greetings. And exquisitely designed corridors. Leading to the likes of this cool spiral staircase up to the fitness center. And its great equipment with views. Plus a whole other side. And a neat glass floor overlooking the infinity pool. Which is positioned over the stern at the back of the promenade deck. For great views in port and while sailing. Back inside the spa are extensive changing facilities. including a chromatic sensory shower, steam room, invigorating cold room, and a sizable dry sauna. And of course there are also tile recliners for everyone to use. as well as many treatment rooms. Starting back at the infinity pool, it's nice to see such an extensive promenade deck on board. To take a stroll nearly the entire length of the ship. Of course, a couple areas stuck inside a bit. But that's okay, because they soon widen out again. And the glass elevators offer a scenic ride up to the top levels of the ship. find a lovely teak-clad pool deck. Our only complaint here is it's rather congested to get around the loungers. But the pool itself is great. As are its surrounding areas. Including the jogging track above, which is more open than below. And you've got to love these clamshell loungers. While I personally can't stand fumes from smoking, I'm impressed by the ship for adding an enclosed area out on deck that keeps the smoke contained. And there's also a secluded connoisseur club for cigar smokers.
just in front of which is the card room. Complete with all sorts of fun board games. And the library across the way is one of the best designed at sea. With great views and comfortable nooks. And also a couple of computer stations. And even if you don't have access to the Regent Suite's private observation lounge, at least there's a public one available as well. Featuring phenomenal details at the bar, and of course great forward-facing views. Last but not least for activities is the sports deck. With a golf driving net, classic shuffleboard, a mini golf course, paddle tennis court, and a bocce court. And actually, the activities continue into dining. with the Culinary Arts Kitchen and its individual cooking stations for guest cooking courses taught by a master chef where we learned how to make surprisingly several dishes in the period of only an hour and a half sped up for illustration purposes In between our cooking, we took breaks to learn even more. And as a non-cook, I must say I was pretty happy with how well I did. With some help, of course. And the last thing we learned how to make was a steamed fish dish. As cooking is a very rare experience for me, I have to admit that I actually had a lot of fun. And now maybe I have a trick or two to share with my wife. But I'm nearly certain she's still better than I am. In either case, I was proud of my accomplishment, that photographed well. Leaving it to the pros, other dining on board included the pool bar and pool grill. Which impressively included an entire buffet outside. as well as sweet ice creams. Of course, inside there's still the buffet at La Veranda, and Italian specialty dining at Sette Mari in the evenings. Where there's plenty of food to go around at all the stations. including tempting desserts. Freshly prepared grilled items. And even more ice cream which can all be enjoyed inside or al fresco. Like the lovely fresh seafood we enjoyed outside. Although we didn't get a chance to try it ourselves, 
Prime 7 is the premium steakhouse on board. Housed in a stylish modern setting. Nestle between it and Chartreuse is the study for private dining. And just next door is Chartreuse itself. For fine French cuisine. And an equally gorgeous dining room. Where we enjoyed the likes of delicious goat cheese and pretzel crumb breading, savory egg tart of leek fondue, slow braised veal breast and apple cider broth, and an unexpected but wonderful banana split. For lighter bites and a quick pick me up downstairs is the cafe and coffee bar. Including a whole spread of fresh treats. like cookies and pastries. Another of the great specialty restaurants on board is Pacific Rim. Which past its dramatic entrance opens up to an inviting dining room. serving tasty Pan-Asian cuisine such as duck spring rolls, spicy hamachi sashimi, beautifully plated beef tataki, a large helping of Canadian lobster tempura, and amazing passion fruit cake. But back at the end of the colonnade, the Compass Rose main dining room also astounds. Not just because of its beautiful decor, but because of its impressive menu, which is the most extensive that I have ever seen, complete with seemingly endless customizability. Among which we enjoyed delicious Alaskan crab salad, a savory and sweet tart tatan, a made-to-order chimichurri-topped surf and turf, and a lovely lime mousse cake send-off. Besides live music, the bulk of the ship's entertainment is hosted in the Constellation Theater. A venue that impresses as double-decker on a ship of the smaller size. Presenting improved production shows and thanks to collaboration with corporate cousin Norwegian Cruise Line. Like My Revolution, telling the story of the British invasion in North America. which is altogether a decent performance. Creatively from the perspective of a woman who is looking back on her teenage years and recalling the music of her generation. before returning to the present day. But not until one final crescendo. For watching. Please feel free to subscribe to our channel, watch our other videos, and visit popularcruising.com.